So, you know, we had a really interesting speaker last night, Larry Fitzgerald, and he made a point that I've never really ever thought of. And one of the players asked him is, how did you stay motivated when you had so much success for so long? And he said, I love the process. I love watching film. I love to practice. I caught extra balls before practice. I ran routes with the quarterback after practice. I love the process. And then when the game came, it was really, really easy. So, you know, that's kind of interesting because some of our best players, some of our really good players that we've had here traditionally in the past, that's exactly how they were. And that's exactly how a lot of the guys on our team right now that are really good players, that's how they are. But we need to have everybody be that way. We don't have anybody, we don't need anybody trying to get out of drills or practicing or whatever. And if they love the process of what it takes not to win a game, but to do the things you need to do to be able to win a game, All right? not to do the things, not just think about being a starter, but what do you do to be a starter? What, what does a starter act like? How does a starter practice? How does a starter go about being responsible to do his job? And I think that was a, a really good message. And I think it's a message that, and you know, Larry made a point of this, that the same thing in your life, being a good parent, being a good husband, doing a good job in whatever it is you do. Um, so it was kind of interesting, but I get asked a lot. I never ever thought of this. How do you stay motivated? And I, I never really could answer it, but I, I love the process. I love practicing. I like getting ready for practice. I like coaching the players on the field, trying to get them to play as good as they can be so we have the best chance. They have the best chance to be successful. We have the best chance to be successful. So hopefully we can get a whole team full of guys getting ready to do that. So, you know, the only injury we have is, you know, JoJo got a Jones fracture in his foot uh, in practice a couple days ago. So. Those things are probably six to eight weeks. So we just have to see how it goes. But hopefully, you know, maybe by October 1st or something like that, he'll be close to being ready to come back. But he was doing a really, really good job, having a really good camp. Uh, probably the best he's been on a consistent basis. You just saw a guy that grew up and was playing with a lot of confidence. So uh, we'll miss him for a while. but. You know, we want them to get well, and I'm sure it will contribute to the team at some point in time this year. We'll start over here with Aaron. Uh, across college football, we have seen these new sort of tight ends that flex out and have wide receiver skills. You guys have had that in the past, and you may have it in the future with Amari Nyblack. What do you think has given rise to that, to that sort of tight end? Well, I, I actually say a tight end is back when I was coaching at the Houston Oilers. A tight end in the National Football League was a guy that put his hand in the dirt beside the tackle. If you talk to Ozzie Newsom, who's a great friend and an Alabama guy and a really good player here and for a long time in the NFL, that's what he did. But now a tight end is really three things. A tight end does that sometimes. A tight end flexes out and plays like a wide receiver sometimes. A tight end is in the off the ball position and he does a lot of things an old fashioned fullback used to do. So it's kind of difficult to find someone who has the skill set to do all three of those things well. Uh, we've had some really good tight ends around here. Uh, I'm encouraged by the guys that we've been able to recruit, the young guys that we've you know, brought in this year. But they have to focus on their development and you know, develop a little better understanding of the offense. But I think they have you know, really good ability. Looking at the receivers, the returning receivers, not the transfers, how have you seen them progress since the, the end of last season? Well, I already talked about JoJo. Um, so, Ja'Cory Brooks is doing really well, very competitive, smart, plays with a lot of toughness, very physical, doing a good job. He's got really good hands. And all the other guys, you know, they're making progress. They're better. Uh, they're getting better. I think they're, you know, doing a, a, a pretty good job. But uh, I think there's a lot of competition at that position between new guys, transfer guys, freshmen, old guys coming in. So uh, be interesting to see how they do when, you know, we scrimmage on Saturday. 
you know, I'm kind of different than everybody else. You know, a lot of these coaches we got, they want to get in the huddle and tell everybody what to do. Well, unless you can get in the huddle in the game and tell them what to do, we got a problem. So sometimes you got to let the players play. So when we go to a scrimmage, we'll see what they know, we'll see how they do, how much confidence they play with, and that'll go a long ways for us to make an evaluation of, is this guy, where, where, where is he in his development relative to being ready to play winning football for us? Henry said he's never covered a back as fast as Jameer Gibbs. Uh, the challenge of defending Gibbs, how have you helped or seen the defense be helped by defending him in practice? I, I think everybody is helped by the quality of players that we have on offense and defense. You know, Patrick Sertain would probably tell you, you know, I covered Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, um, Smitty, Jaden Waddle, every day in practice for three years. How many guys did I play against in a game that was any better than those guys based on where they got drafted and all that and how much production they had? So I think, you know, iron sort of sharpens iron at every position. You know, Cam Robinson won the Outland Trophy playing left tackle around here. And the guy playing right end, he won the, he won the Nagurski, Jonathan Allen. They practice against each other every day for three years. So it helps everybody get better when you have good players. You know, J Jameer Gibbs plays at a different speed. Uh, I, he breaks contain on the defense because that's good for the defense. So when we play against a good back that has great speed, you know, maybe we can keep leverage on them better. So it not only helps Henry, it probably helps everybody on the defensive team. And it, I think it helps at every position that players get challenged in practice and they have to do things correctly and create good habits so they have the best chance to be successful when a game comes. I just want to ask you about J.C. Latham and the progress you've maybe seen him make from this time last year to now. Well, he's made a lot of progress. He's a lot more confident. He's very physical. I think he's got a better understanding uh, of, you know, what he's supposed to do, uh, why it's important to do it that way, how he's supposed to do it, and he's playing extremely well. Um, I'm, I'm pleased with both tackles, you know, so far in camp. How has the kicking and punting looked so far? Well, we had to punt inside, so if we could evaluate how that looks going up in the net, I couldn't tell you. But it's been good when we've been outside. Just unfortunately, like we were outside today, but we got chased in by the storm, and we got chased in right when kicking period was coming. So we end up kicking the net, and I really can't. It's hard to evaluate, but in, in all the specialty periods and individual periods, the kicking has been good and the kickers have been really, um, I think, improved. And, you know, Will has been very consistent as, as usual. From where he started to now, what's been the biggest uh, strides Chris Braswell has taken? Braz is a good player. He's a good rusher. He's got great first stiff quickness. He can turn speed to power. Uh, he's got a much better understanding of what he's supposed to do on defense, playing outside backer. You know, it takes guys a little bit of time who have their hand in the dirt all the time when they're in high school, and then we try to teach them how to play standing up, which is a good fit for a lot of guys B because they're not really big enough to be defensive ends, especially at the next level. So if they can play outside backer and then they can rush on third down, that creates tremendous value when they learn how to play standing up. And he has learned that, and he's improved at you know, the pass coverage part of it. But he's a really good rusher. He's got great first step quickness. And look, you can be quick and fast, but if you can't turn speed to power, you're never going to be an effective rusher. So, and he can do that really well. So. I think we have three guys there right now that are really good players at outside backer. Kind of going back to special teams, who are some of the players that are standing out at both kick return turner and uh, punt returner, and how do you feel about both of those units? Well, Jameer has done a really good job as a kickoff returner. I think we're trying to develop depth behind him. JoJo did some punt returning last year. He'd made significant amount of improvement in judgment, fielding the balls, and all those types of things. So we were encouraged by that. 
Uh, Kool-Aid's been back there. Uh, Jermaine Burton has been back there. So we just have to, you know, see the number one important thing on punt return is possession of the ball. So we'd like to get a first down and average over 10 yards of punt return. That's great for field position. But possession of the ball has to be the most important thing. So the guy that's going to be the most consistent fielder is going to get the, be the guy that has the opportunity to do it until JoJo gets back. Here we got two more. The first one will come from Zoom. Uh, Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, hi, Coach. Uh, general question about the program here with a, with a new season starting. So with Dan Lanning hired at Oregon, there are six of your assistants from the same 2015 staff who are head coaches. Kiffin, Cristobal, Tucker, Napier, just to name a few. Uh, what does that mean to you and the program? Is that something that you ever sit back in and sort of uh, think about? I'm happy for all those guys. They did a fantastic job when they were here. Uh, that's why we had a successful team. They did a great job with their relationships to the players, teaching the players, preparing the players to play the game so that we could be successful. And it's no surprise to me that any of them, because their leadership qualities, they're all very bright guys, that they had a lot of success. And they did a good job here for us because that's what they aspired to be. So I'm happy to see them have the opportunities to do it and in many cases doing a really, really good job of it. So uh, it, I'm, I'm happy for them. It's not about me. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for them. And uh, we have some very good coaches on our staff now. and. Hopefully, they'll get some opportunities. If we can continue to have success, I think that enhances that. Coach, when you look at Will Anderson Jr. and, of course, Bryce Young, two different personalities there, one fiery, one a little bit you know, cool as a cucumber, I want to know how does that dynamic help having those two personalities as leaders, and do that, does that dynamic compare to any other leadership you've had in the teams in the past? Well, I don't like to compare players, but one thing that they, the two of those guys have in common they're both great competitors. They might have a different personality, all right, but when you get on the field and start playing, uh, they're great competitors. Uh, they prepare well. They understand what they're supposed to do. They understand what everybody else is supposed to do. They're trying to help other players on their side of the ball, you know, play better, especially with, you know, effort and toughness and knowing what to do and how to execute it. So they both do that well. They have a different personality. And they both have great personalities. But when it comes to being competitive, they're a lot alike. Is that it? So I'm supposed to smile and say thank you.